This build started like most of my projects, by breaking down the rough material into more manageable pieces. The workbench ended up being about 5 feet long and about 30 inches wide. There will be a link below for the SketchUp file as well as the build plans. Let's jump to the SketchUp model so I can explain the design a little better. I styled the design after a Meruvian workbench, which also has splayed legs but a traditional Meruvian is designed to be a portable knockdown workbench. To make room for the planar lift, the middle section of the bench hinges out of the way, which gives the room needed for the planer to rise up. Now, I missed filming the glue up of the workbench top, but I started by gluing up three boards at a time so it still fit through my planer. Then I glued the three sections into one. With the workbench glued up, I moved on to the solid maple core legs that have a quarter inch walnut veneer on the outside. This was a massive savings in material versus doing solid walnut legs. With two sides of the walnut veneer attached, I trimmed a bulk of the material with my track saw, and then I used this amazing spiral flush trim bit from Bits and Bits remove all the excess material before gluing on the other two sides of the walnut veneer. Let me know in the comments if this is a trick that you've used before to save money on materials. With workbench legs veneered and squared off, I was able to add the five degree angle to the top and bottom of each of the legs and move on to the front and side rails. Again, I milled up all my rough maple and dimensioned all my pieces. The bottom front back rails needed a 5 degree profile so they would match the legs. This also meant the mortise and tenons had to be cut at the same 5 degree angle. It took some maths, but I was able to get my rails cut and mortised without any mistakes. You can see the 5 degree angle a little bit better here. Okay, back to the legs. I used a 1 inch Forstner bit to hog out most of the materials for the mortises. And then I just used my router with this janky router jig to clean them out. To join the bottom rails to the legs, I opted to draw bore in wooden dowels, which I'll show you more about later. The top back rail, which the planer mounts to, I figured I should make removable just in case I make some mistakes. So I notched out a section along the top back legs to support the rail. For the bottom side rails, I had planned on doing mortise and tenon joinery, but accidentally cut my material too short. So I used this magical tool called a, let me see if I can get this right, Fanastul Damano, I think it's Italian, to magically make mortises appear. For the top side rails, I had to use four quarter maple to allow clearance for the Rockler 12 inch quick vise. Now back to draw boring, I used a brad point bit to mark where my dowels would line up with the tenons on the front rails and I used that same bit to offset the mark further to help draw the rails into the leg mortises. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to see you hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I have several projects like this coming up. I use the edges of the dowels to give them a slight taper. On the top back rail where the planer would be attached, instead of squaring this rail off, I use my three quarter round over bit to ease the edge. And then I pre-drilled and countersunk lag bolts to attach the rail. I also added lag bolts on each side of the rail where the planer would be mounted. I had some beautiful quilted maple, which I mounted on the underside of the workbench top, never to be seen again, to have as a mounting plate for the vise. 
Having the bench upside down also made adding the removable casters super easy. Here's a link to a video my buddy Nick made on how to install these rock removable casters. <laughs> okay, so I bet I measured this a hundred times, but I took my time to draw out where the planer would sit within the workbench top, and then I transferred those marks to the top of the bench. I sanded the underside of the workbench top and added cross bracing just outside of the sections where I'd be cutting out the middle with my track saw. Then I was able to flip the workbench, reattach the base, and hope I don't make the biggest mistake on this whole build. I guess it's true what they say, measure twice, cut once. This was done pretty quickly and pretty easily without any major hiccups. I clamped the middle section back onto the top of the workbench and I was able to start laying out where my hinges would go. I used sauce, 180 degree hidden hinges, and I had to mortise out the back to be able to receive the hinge into the middle section as well as the workbench. And I promise, by the time I got to cutting out my last mortise, it did not look this ugly. I need to give a huge shout out to Rockler for supporting my channel and helping me with this build. All the products I use from Rockler are linked below in the description. Thanks Rockler. The planer is mounted to the flip top, which is attached to the back rail with a heavy duty piano hinge. I used a self-centering drill bit to drill my holes and then added 5 8 screws to attach the platform to the hinge. Really not sure if this was a good idea, but I used two scraps of maple as spacers in order to align my planer with the bench top. Thought I should add a little bit of clearance, so I added strips of 18 gauge brad nails under each corner of the maple scraps to lift the planer up just slightly. With a flip top base clamped to the planer, I was able to draw a line on the top back rail so I knew where to attach the heavy duty piano hinge. To strengthen the flip top platform, I made oversized trim out of four quarter maple and wrapped it in a groove for the plywood to sit in. I also notched out a section on the back of the trim so I wasn't interfering with the top back rail. bench was coming together, so I turned my attention to the lift mechanism, which is driven by a winch mounted to the back inside of the back lower rail on the workbench. If you want to see a more in-depth video on this mechanism, I've added a card here, and once this video is published, you'll be able to check that out. This is another great reason to hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on that video. After mildly electrocuting myself, I started adding all the pulleys to run the cable up to the top of the workbench, and then attach the cables with eye hooks to the flip top base. I also made sure to add two cable clamps on each side of the cables. At this time I realized that the belt housing of the planer interfered with the middle section of the bench which flipped out of the way. I'm gonna hit pause for a second. We had the winch hooked up with the lift and everything going and it worked great, lifted everything, no weight on it. But what we found was when it hit the top and there was tension on the cables, the two cross supports actually bowed in uh, just from the pressure. So long term that worries me a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two cross braces on either side of where the winch will go. Also, the shroud for the winch, uh, I didn't think I was gonna need it. It looked like it was more just for in case the cable snapped and I had a housing I was gonna build around it, but I missed that there was a little bushing at the end to kind of support the, uh, support the spool. So it kind of flexed in a little bit, which I don't like. So the thing is bright yellow, so I just put a coat of black paint on it so it'll look slick. Once that's dry, I have to build a new back plate for it for mounting and I'm gonna mill up the material right now to do those cross supports and we'll go from there. I had to cut slots in the front cross braces to allow for the cables to pass through. And of course, I used more of this beautiful quilted maple to make a new mounting plate for the winch. With the flip top now able to support the way of the planer, I used a brad point bit to mark out where I was going to add my mounting hardware. 
I then added a strip of unnecessary walnut on the front of the flip top as trim. Moving on to the wiring, this winch came with a limit switch which prevented the cable from being pulled too tight. I rewired and relocated this limit switch to prevent the flip top from being raised too high. Okay, it's kind of a figure it out as I go moment. The planer, the way it sits, I had to notch out this big section on the lift to accommodate for the belt housing as well as this fine adjustment. But what I didn't realize is when I measured this out and set this up, this was set to two inches. So that'd be fine if I ever wanted to do anything up to about two inches of planing, but anything less than that, this will not work. I don't have the clearance. So what I'll be doing is just adding some of these blocking strips to the top of the table, which isn't a bad thing because it actually gave me a better idea for how to do the runners for the in and out feed for the planer. With the blocking strips glued in place, I added all the bolts to mount the planer to the flip top. And for the first time, I could test the lift. I decided to add some additional locking pins to the underside of the workbench to help hold it steady when it was fully raised. I'll add a link below to the locking pins that I purchased. I used Starbond CA glue to hold the mounts in place so I could attach them to the underside of the bench. I put black Sharpie on the tips of the pins so I could create registration holes in the flip top. All right, home stretch. I started milling up eight quarter spalted maple for the vice end and cap. Now I won't go too much into the installation of this vise because there's a lot of great videos out there on how to do this. The front of the workbench needed to be trimmed down by about an eighth of an inch just to match up with the depth of the flip top section. I can now start roughing up the walnut trim for the top of the workbench. To joint the boards I actually used my track saw which worked awesome and I'll definitely be doing this again. Before passing the wallet through the planer, I added these rollers to the underside of the workbench middle section. This was a wicked addition and made moving material back and forth so much easier. Now that the walnut trim was milled up, I cut the tapers to start attaching each of the trim sections. I found clamping it in place the easiest way to be able to mark out where my cuts needed to be. Here you can actually see a better view of the taper I put on the bench top trim. I attached the long sections with Dominos. Dominos? Dominos. I'm not sure. And while the glue is drying, I did a bit of epoxy work to fix some of the voids in the walnut. To prevent tear out on the top of the workbench, I used the CA glue and blue tape trick to attach scraps of plywood on each end of where I'd be routing out for the T-track. I added T-track on either end as well as strips on either side of the workbench and then an additional strip of T-Track on the front side of the workbench. From there, I could start laying out my dog holes. Tell me this isn't genius. I saw Anthony Scalaro on his YouTube video, which I'll, I'll link up above here. Uh, he used a sheet of pegboard in order to lay out where his dog holes were gonna go. So it might be hard to see from where you are, but all I've done is measured everything out. And because these holes are an inch apart on this whole piece of pegboard, I can use a self-centering bit just to kind of make my marks my Fosner bit? What? What am I saying? My Forstner bit has somewhere to go. So we'll see what goes. I did try doing a time lapse of this, but I forgot that all important step of hitting the record button. It was a last minute decision to add a hidden drawer to the end of the workbench opposite to the vise. If you haven't seen how I make drawers, go check out my video about the miter saw station. Now because this T-Track is aluminum, you can cut it with woodworking tools. I made marks with an X-Acto knife and then cut my pieces over at my miter saw. For installing T-Track, a self-centering drill bit is so key. And finally, with all the T-Track installed, I was able to start applying finish to the workbench. All right, 
I need your opinion. I'm gonna put a poll right here. But do I do a hard wax finish or a water-based finish? The top, regardless on the workbench, will have a layer of paste wax on it, but this is hardwood. Hard wax was the clear winner and is able to get my kids to come help me put on two coats of Maker Brand Simple Finish. I can't wait to start using all the features of this workbench. With all the hold down capacity and not having to lug around a 90 pound planer, this is going to make my life so much easier. So guys, not only is this the most involved build I've ever done, this also marks the 30th video I've ever published on YouTube. Thanks to all of you who've been following since day one. Your support and encouragement has definitely kept me going. And a huge thanks again to Rockler for supporting my channel basically from the beginning. I've linked all the Rockler products below and I've queued up a few more videos here for you to watch next. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Have a blessed one.